Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I'm Samir Mehta, your moderator, and we'll take you through another challenging complex coronary lesion. Uh, I want to begin by thanking so many of you who have sent comments uh, following uh, last month's uh, retrograde CTO. You have found it extremely instructional and uh, there have been several questions to have a request Dr. Kinney post her uh, modified Kinney technique uh, recommendations on the website. Uh, we are going to do that soon and you'll be able to follow it. Uh, Following also upon your uh, deep interest in the CTO, we have another uh, uh, CTO plan for today, uh, most probably uh, anti-grade approach. Uh, hopefully you will find it as useful and learn many valuable uh, lessons. Uh, today is session number 51 and number 13 with our wonderful partnership with the American College of Cardiology. With these words, uh, let me welcome Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma from the cath lab. Uh, anu, Good morning. Good morning. Samin, good morning. All right, morning. good with our team here. Uh, welcome uh, globe to our global audience uh, with uh, our ACC partner has been uh, tremendous. And as you said that a um, lot of positive feedback to make the retrograde technique quite simple, uh, which uh, Anu did last month. Uh, and the individual steps, we actually usually we are ready uh, before the next month, but now we have to go through all the steps and to be very crystal clear that um, to uh, formulate them and will be available by this weekend uh, about uh, various technical approaches which uh, Anu mentioned. And uh, clearly the CTO has been the new frontier for us, uh, for almost everyone. And uh, the goal today also will be uh, to show a CTO case and maybe more anti-grade approach rather than the retrograde. Uh, with that note, I welcome and we start the case. Uh, this uh, with um, our um, supporters uh, right here, which is shown uh, on this slide, which is ever increasing because of popularity and uh, the uh, our disclosures, all three of us. And uh, this case is a 56-year-old uh, male, and this is actually the case number 15. So that uh, with the ACC, uh, as you mentioned, total case number 51st, uh, we have been doing it for since July of 2009, but uh, clearly the for with ACC 15th month. Uh, this patient actually very interesting, young patient. He presented with exertional fatigue and has a stress echo which revealed multi-segmental uh, hypocontractility and fall in EF and had a cath on July 11th of this month revealed two CTOs, RCA and yeah. LAD with a minimal LV dysfunction. Uh, syntax score was 25 and patient had a PCI of the RCA using Zion's Expedition 2.7533. Has been on good medical therapy as shown here and uh, we are going to show the angiogram uh, if we can go to uh, Kath. His uh, EDP today we see the LV gram was uh, 14. You still see some uh, anterolateral uh, hypo and uh, RCA is okay. This is where his native RCA, the stent looks good. We did go to RAO view to see if we can see any septals to see. check for any retrograde uh, ch channels if you need it. But uh, as but you, you have, have it very thin. Yeah. There, what yeah, you see is this is like a dual uh, PDA, uh, not early by a bifurcation, but a dual PDA. Part of the distal PDA is coming from the PDA that uh, originates early, and the later on uh, part of the P uh, PDA uh, the, that comes from the crux. Because there are a few septals coming from there. So there may be one septal, but you truly don't see it. And this is where we have his left system. Proximal uh, LED is OK, and LED essentially is uh, filling from uh, the large diagonal. You have a nice big epicardial collateral that's filling the LED, distal LED. And this is the RAO view. We're just confirming the same uh, with the moderate disease of the OM. Anu, two quick questions here. Uh, you virtually ruled out a retrograde approach here? I would not say virtually. means uh, if we are unsuccessful anti-grade, nope. we can still uh, probably try that there is one septal which is uh, from coming off here. No, but I, the, in my opinion, why don't the retrograde, if necessary, through the diagonal? All that's epicardial collateral, but it's a large vessel. If we don't go anti-grade, go next view. Because you see a very nice apical connection. So retrograde, but not necessarily from the PDA, but from the diagonal. 
usually when you see those kind of uh, curly q right, right what you're seeing when you are reaching the apex you the dag is okay but as you're reaching the apex see how the dag collaterals are yeah those kind of curly yeah, q they rupture no matter what and no. this is a epicardial when they rupture you end up with the you know pericardial tamponade i'm sure you don't the need. patient or the family asked you the question uh, what percentage uh, of success would you kind of give it to them at this stage for the uh, anti grade uh, we still quote about a uh, 85% success rate excellent uh, samin uh, what characteristics are we seeing there which would make it favorable yep and i think that's a very important point that you see the there is not calcium and i'll go through that once again which we did last month there is a branch but branch is beyond uh, or proximal to the total stump and there is a, you see a nice stump so basically and segment wise your length of the segment i think it doesn't matter nowadays what basic issues are if the branch originating at the site and second is the calcium and seems to be both of them are not present and of course the bridge collateral always has been the issue traditionally so those are the of the three i can see here that seems to be that lack of all the three adversities uh, may make this uh, lesion favorable and what do you think um i think in this day and age the only negative factor uh, for cto is uh, calcium yep agreed and the lesion length other than that everything we can uh, overcome okay the now therefore stra strategy will be and we'll come back to that in about 10 minutes if we can go back to our slides uh, that this patient continue to have symptoms and uh, is here for uh, our pci of the led and of course uh, minimal symptoms and they still markedly markedly positive stress echo uh, so that appropriate now what i'm going to do to uh, points uh, today is just give some update on the cto recanalization technical point of view some uh, uh, our uh, support devices region is that we are given enough uh, uh, the data of the cto success and so but just to give some update and more importantly what i really want to talk about is because we have abundant of literature in last 6 8 months and recently uh, just 2 weeks ago on the timing of the p2 p2 y12 receptor blocker loading region has been because of the guidelines based on the clopidogrel the guidelines are that as soon as patient comes to the emergency room for acute coronary syndrome you load them as soon as possible before the angiogram is that the right approach and we have clear cut answer for that question so first one is technical as you mentioned unfavorable and uh, the severe calcium in my opinion is the only factor at this point uh, of the unfavorable anatomy for uh, success uh, and clearly the success keeps going as you see here 80 plus percent and complication keep going down and i would say if you incorporate the stage intervention knowing that about uh, uh, some cases where you failed first time you bring them back you add another 10 10 12% of success so success rate in my opinion now and our data also about 90% uh, taken all cases together which we try the as i showed last time also there is a different variation in the institution and geographic pattern that who tries the ctos so you may have cto may be present in 15% of uh, our angiography but intervention of the cto occurs in is done in only 4 5% reason is that many centers will not do the cto so the dedicated center having a dedicated team and continued success with a lower complication will drive this uh, field uh, to the next level of the cto success now this uh, we are going to talk about more of the anti grade uh, which kind of wire should be used and so whether it's a uh, and the technique with the drilling the penetration or sliding i think the most commonly what we use is the drill back and forth and of course change the wire shape based on the advancement of the wire and you get to the more stiff wire uh, then a specialized technique for anti grade recanalization the anchor balloon many time the guide does not have enough support mother and child catheter technique parallel wire i was guidance and controlled dissection approach which is a star and last that is basically anti grade dissection now most important being that these are the i put it here cto dissection or reentry strategy both anti grade and retrograde you can see here idea should be that if you can go without causing dissection that should be the goal and uh, the only issue i still remain based on the literature is your reentry of the anti grade dissection of the star last and string ray although we don't have the clear cut long term data of the string ray uh, but uh, the try to avoid extensive anti grade dissection now 
the what really has helped our success rate using the Corsair micro catheter which is the channel dilator so that you don't have to have balloon dilatation these are the thin uh, eight thin wires wo wound with two large ones and really gives the nice pushability and trackability and second is the guide wire guide catheter extension the concept of the mother and child so that basically your guide sits at the ostium but then you another 20 30 centimeter or millimeter you go put into the uh, into the vessel and those are the two available at present the guide liner uh, by the vascular solution and second is Godzilla the concept remains the same that you are extending 25 centimeter of the guide into the vessel gives additional support there are minor differences between two of them uh, and we have used both and the guide liner v3 is quite well and of course now we have a recent addition of uh, Godzilla which is a Boston scientific but key is that overall it's a very very important uh, device to increase our success and we actually just have a paper published in Journal of Interventional Cardiology with the, using the guide liner uh, catheter uh, patients with uncrossable CTOs. So basically what we did is 28 cases where wire went but no balloon went so use the guide liner. Then guide liner succeeded in 24 patients while it could not succeed in other four. So 86% success rate and 14% uh, failure uh, and of course uh, you see the basically outcome of those patients. But the key remains is uh, the clearly the guide liner helps. Now second is the very important issue of the timing of our stronger antiplatelet therapy remember the whole concept uh, in the past of uh, of giving the clopidogrel loading as, as as early as possible and so and so forth cure and pci cure and so but clearly the the field has changed we have more stronger antiplatelet therapy so that there are three studies i'm going to briefly touch and two of them are in, in non STEMI patients and one in non STEMI. One was by Demetrius Alexopoulos uh, comparing the ticagrelor versus presagrel in patients with ST elevation. And these were the 55 patients. They were, uh, and they have a lot of pharmacodynamic studies and basically showed that at two hours, your cutoff being 230, that really both agents work quite well. The, they, they found ticagrelor slightly more effective, re bringing down to the PRU compared to a presagrel uh, trend at two hours. At four hours, six hours, both have substantial inhibition. So very important. So two hours is kind of a minimum, and basically showing that what are the number of patients with a high treatment platelet reactivity, almost nil with these agents. So clearly what we learned compared to our earlier clopidogrel group that by using the newer agent of ticagrel or presagrel, there is hardly any high treatment residual platelet reactivity patient. So everybody is inhibited, but it doesn't take one hour. It doesn't take eight hours. It takes about two hours and so. The second, which was just published a, a few weeks ago, again, the comparison of presagrel and ticagrelor loading dose uh, of uh, this is the 50 patient same concept which i showed earlier and the uh, duplicated the same the two to four hours is the time for uh, efficacy or full inhibition of these agents so that there are slightly in this study presagrel was slightly better than ticagrelor uh, and you can see here that after six hours uh, uh, the full inhibition takes place but key is two to four hours and this was the major landmark study from our point of view is called ACOST. The concept was patient comes in with the acute coronary syndrome, non STEMI. Should you be giving Presagul in the emergency room? Just like the recommendation of ACC that uh, PTY. P2 Y12 receptor blocker should be given as soon as possible patient comes to the hospital. Uh, that data were based on the PCI cure and others the, with a clopidogrel uh, and uh, we don't have a clear data. And this trial basically randomized patients that acute coronary syndrome non-STEMI, whether you give 30 milligram presagrel at the time of uh, presentation and then go to the cath lab and if you require PCI then give additional 30 milligram versus second group the placebo was given in the emergency room or first contact and then after the uh, cath when PCI was decided you give 60 milligram loading dose and very interesting so basically concept was the uh, test presagrel preload versus at the time of the PCI and guess what we found that pre-treatment versus no pre-treatment at seven days exactly identical except you have a higher major bleeding with a pre-treatment and same thing at 30 days so no difference in outcome no difference in mi mortality primary efficacy endpoint rather more bleeding by pre-treatment so that uh, uh, this is basically put the graph form 
that uh, no uh, no difference in efficacy but higher major bleeding and uh, the same uh, continues whether it's uh, seven days or 30 days uh, in terms of bleeding. So clearly the message is that uh, by giving preload early is uh, you cause more bleeding without any benefit. So that mess is that should not be given. And why? This shows the pharmacokinetic study that by giving preload by the time patient came to the cath lab in half hour or two, uh, half to two hours, your platelets are already inhibited. PRU was 100. So you don't want that. And they, clearly that led to this higher bleeding in these patients. And uh, the then question comes is what we should be doing in some cases, particularly with the, the newer agent, which is Cangrelor, intravenous clopidogrel, we call it, very short acting um, uh, the onset and offset action of 9-10 minutes. And now we actually have three major trials, uh, two earlier and latest one of the champion Phoenix. All of you pooled analysis published in Lancet showed that by giving Cangrelor compared to clopidogrel, these patients in various settings, acute coronary syndrome, PCI and so, that you decrease the death MI uh, and stent thrombosis as shown in this uh, study. And you don't have slight trend of the bleeding, but overall not a significant difference in bleeding. So that therefore, now once the agent will be available, we'll have a little dilemma that which case we should be using it and so. But clearly that we'll have another agent available to us soon uh, in these cases that where you want to avoid preloading and uh, maybe use the IV uh, Cangrelor in some of these cases. And with that note, I think I stop here and we go with our uh, uh, that uh, uh, procedure now. Samin, uh, very relevant issues, uh, nicely dealt. Uh, there are a few follow-up questions which I'll continue asking you. In the meantime, Anu, take us through the progress you have made. Um, we actually, we are waiting, so we start on uh, live. So if you see here, we have a guide. This is a guide shot. Same, we have uh, six French. Mark, yeah, yeah, compared yeah, to like a lot of people use a yeah, bigger guide, we use a smaller, uh, uh, just go with the six French and so. Uh, and uh, I think that caused less trauma to the vessel. And every study has shown, bigger the guide, higher is the vascular complication. So I have the fine cross and uh, the initial wire will be the same. You have to get to the lesion with any kind of uh, your uh, workhorse wire. I have the fielder, regular fielder which will uh, go till there and then the question comes which is the first wire that you want to try uh, with the CTO because uh, most people ask the question is uh, do you go with the miracle bro or do you want to go start with the pilot wire I think it all depends um, um, you know what which wire you are comfortable with to start your uh, initial uh, drilling process um, Have no. you even done a few cases with Confianza as the first one? Um, yes. Uh, I'll tell you which cases. In this uh, case where you know your uh, opening is like a, you know, tapered, conical, then you can go with your, uh, CM, you know, real CTO wires, which is Miracle or your uh, pilot. When you have a flush occlusion and you need to make a, a you know, hole in the proximal cap, that's when you would want to go with the Confianza. You want to bring your uh, fine cross yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. I'll go to the diag. Yeah. And use the, uh, the, the your side branch uh, for uh, bringing the device and then of course you direct it after pulling back a little bit. So in this situation, many times the floppy uh, tipped, uh, you know, polymer coated wire may not be helpful. Maybe you need to just use uh, your regular wire. Okay. So now what you do is just poke a little bit and see whether this wire itself can make a progress. And this is a fielder wire. Regular fielder. Regular fielder, not fielder FC. Not fielder XT. Fielder XT. So there are the fielders, which is regular fielder. You have a tip load of uh, like 3.7 then you have your fielder fc again your tip load uh, about uh, just about two then you have fielder xt fielder xt you are a tip load about 1.2 but more important is it's tapered tip but they all are polymer coated and all compared this to then the pilot comes which starts at 50 150 and 200 polymer coated but your tip is stiffer and 200 gives you as a stiffness about 4.1 so i'm still trying it very slow it's not 
going so then this is the time you want to change don't even waste any more time here the question do you want to go to miracle or uh, pilot um, i think um, or just go to miracle 6 now see the guide is no, here goes guide is uh, uh, okay now we are better get the miracle okay Samin, a first question from the presentation you made uh, in your uh, work published in the Journal of uh, Invasive Cardiology. The 28 patients, there were 24 successful with guideliners. Yeah. What did you do for the other four? The other four, uh, that we actually go back to that slide, that um, the one, two one of them... Two, two were successful, two, I know. And yeah, how by doing they the rotablation. No, then they needed rota. This rotablation. Is, this is the cases where in old days, uh, we would have uh, had to do rota. Uh, and, and um, you know, the question always comes, how would you do rota? Take your fine cross all the way to how far it can go. And then the channel that you have created through your CTO wire, you hope you'll get your rota wire through that. Um, this is uh, something else we, which we did in this, uh, you know, cases where what we did was once we know your wire has crossed, so your wire has crossed, but same, some moderate calcium is there, and no device will go. Uh, what we uh, get the guideliner, um, same thing as as much as you can, and then you go with your newer balloon, which is the 1.2. Uh, um, either we. You, use a mini trek or you have your uh, sprinter balloon so when we with the help of the guideliner we were able to get this uh, smaller balloons uh, through the lesion and uh, the key is that those two cases now what happened even the balloon did not cross balloon nose comes into the lesion and then you can take the wire out and rota wire will go and then you use a 1.25 bar but uh, those were the two cases other two cases we couldn't do anything uh, unsuccessful exactly. and one of the case actually we brought back and that's the only case we had done the laser for CTO I had to bring that patient for eczemal because the rota wire will never get into the right channel so could not do 1.25 bar ever and uh, then we brought that patient for eczemal laser succeeded because we were able to get the wire but no balloon will go through and uh, that was the case with the success with the eczemal laser Making excellent progress here, Anu. Feel reasonably confident it's in the true lumen? Um, yeah, the tip is uh, moving free. Moving very nicely, yes. And the same signal is, you're not having any PVCs, it's a good sign. That but keep uh, going. since we don't have, uh, okay, we have to take a picture. Okay, so. let's take a low mag and take a picture so that to see whether it fills back. Because there was nothing retrograde filling, so you have to have a long cine. No, it has moved out to somewhere, different area. Somewhere yeah. after initial, I yeah. think it goes. Uh, uh, Samin, okay. another follow-up question with your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, COST trial, are you able to reasonably extrapolate the results to Ticagrelor? I would say so, yes. Because that's what the whole purpose was, that all the uh, cost has been done with the press agul, but it looks like pharmacokinetics of both the agents are similar. Both works within two hours and uh, get to the maximum platelet efficacy um, inhibition so that uh, it should be the same way. Excellent. Now this case I am sure uh, he was brought also to take advantage to demonstrate in a, in a live case. Otherwise, uh, how, what is your uh, policy to stage patients? When do you bring uh, patients for the second procedure? Yeah, no, I think the CTOs are a little different. CTO, the, you have to have symptoms in between or additional ischemia. Uh, this patient, uh, we thought that uh, we do the RCA, see how he does, uh, and uh, continues to have that same fatigue, um, uh, but uh, did not uh, did improve, but not completely, uh, so that it came back for this part two. How uh, would you feel about, uh, you know, the, the biggest, I think... Uh, I think I need a fielder. We are in the vessel yeah, there. Yeah, biggest? Uh, Biggest buzzword is uh, transradial. Uh, would you consider this patient to be done transradial CTO? Yeah, well, that's a good point. I think the expert of the CTO might do uh, this with a transradial, but clearly you see the guide support, total occlusions, that as such, the crossover, even in the experience ha hands, in all the trials of the transradial, uh, is about 6 to 8%. So once you get more complex cases, I would say even that number will go down. Second, is that if you're doing a contralateral injection to do a both transradial uh, and then try to do a ret um, the retrograde injection or retrograde recanalization is 
पॉसिबल बट टेक्निकली वेरी वेरी फिजिकली चैलेंजिंग एंड डिमांडिंग टू द इंटरवेंसलिस्ट बिकॉज इट विल ब्रेक देयर बैक एंड सो इवन इफ यू पुट आई और हैंड अक्रॉस सो देयर फोर इन माई ओपिनियन दो काइंड ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स केसेज इवन विद ट्रांस रेडियल गुरूज माई एडवाइज इज दैट अनलेस देर इज अश्यू विद द वेस्कुलर एक्सेस डू इट फेमरली एंड यू क्लोज दैम एनी वे You need to uh, go to a different wire. Keep talking. No, no, I'm I'm yeah. trying to see. Maybe uh, looks like I'm in the lumen. Yeah. Uh, but I just need to get into the LED. It keeps going to the septal. Right. You need a different wire or same. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can field? take the fielder back and uh, get into the. Samin, uh, was this patient presented a surgical option? No. Yes, when the, he was when he first came. Because the two CTOs uh, with the less. I mean, we did talk to the patient with the idea I, that uh, whether succeed or not. When once, once your two vessel disease, your syntax score uh, is uh, is non-diabetic because the syntax diabetic of 23 and plus. Uh, usually for the three vessel this patient has only two vessel disease uh, and um, cirque was completely fine barely 30 40% lesion so that the, our syntax calculation does not really apply uh, into this case but you know any time you have two ctos in young patient you always talk um, uh, about that what is the best approach should you go for surgery and get those two bypasses done uh, but clearly we felt that we we have a good success of uh, Uh, the CTO recanalization in this particular case, so that uh, and uh, uh, despite little brisk collaterals of the right coronary, Anu was able to succeed that time. So it's the reasonable that we, uh, uh, you know, selected this approach. Okay, can you let's take an angiogram and see? Huh? Okay. Yeah, good. Low, low mag. Go. Yeah, you definitely look to be entering uh, the right channel, but uh, uh, Go, probably in the septal. Yeah. yeah. Anu, would it be absolutely crazy to consider ever, or uh, I don't know what have what has been your experience, uh, epicardial uh, uh, approach? Ever uh, done that? We have done uh, two cases, but uh, both uh, one was where you know the you know like I told you, no curly cue straight uh, cases where uh, your chance that you'll be able to go through rather than. Uh, um have rupture of the epicardial vessels you in this in wire, this yeah, yeah. no mm -hmm. in this yeah give me a uh, which wire oh. you need because this wire is going more subtle yeah, yeah. confianza 9 confianza pro 9 yeah because the, the we actually there was a one very big um the pda collateral from the epical led uh, but uh, but uh, to say the other point that we have tried few epicardials because other things failed and uh, more often than not get into trouble now sometimes this you will rupture so proximally you bring the balloon and then you stop make the curve and uh, show the curve which way you want to make it uh, and then what you do is proximally you occlude with the balloon so therefore uh, that bleeding uh, you know that um, uh, rupture of that vessel causing slight bleeding stops so i not created any tampon art or so but definitely um, is that um, could create uh, catastrophe so i mean uh, your uh, institution also does uh, an excellent job with the several clinical cardiology conferences there is one i notice uh, the top 10 advances coming uh, next month uh, yes. what all are you focusing uh, in that well um, because we have such a big network of our physicians uh we do a june symposium for last 16 years uh their big demand was that we not do any dedicated for the clinical cardiologist so that i started 3 uh, years ago this will be the third year of the top 10 and basically goal is that select 10 uh, topics uh in various fields try to keep less focus on intervention so there may be one uh, interventional topic like will be a tavi uh, in this um, the, the, this time and then rest keep it clinical uh, advance of the ep ablation uh, uh, the arrhythmia hypertension so can you so some the keep uh, the make a one important uh, and uh, basically is that a 30 uh, minute presentation and then the most important part of the tra uh, the the symposium is then i have the all three three cases uh, you know lectures and then faculty discussion uh, for 45 minutes so the people can ask the questions by the card or so and that to me is very uh, uh, the 
rewarding and people really like to uh, discuss their own issues and own cases and so on and so forth. So that has been very, very successful. So the idea is 30 minutes lecture followed by 15 minutes uh, case, you know, the question answer. But all the three, we make a three sessions. So three combined, so 45 minutes, you have a very nice um, question answer session through a moderator. Excellent. Anu, uh, tell us what's going on now. Anu, any, any also, uh, please tell us. Then I wanted to ask you whether a contralateral injection here uh, would be of any use. Uh, contralateral probably no. Not also, you see it the right guy. Yeah. You, you kind of, yeah. You are seeing it now. Yeah. No, I'm just uh, th uh, thinking is uh, LED is coming from some other. Would it help to, to help to put a small balloon there and dilate at the stage or? Uh, you probably want to keep trying with the wires first. I think we have to try with the wire since this keeps uh, going into the septal. Back to the same septal. Yeah. Make sure the patient is in the room. Okay. To our viewers, uh, send your questions info at cccliveCases.org. Uh, hmm? Other septal? Not this one. This keeps going to the... Yeah, going down. you need to bring uh, your fine cross and yeah, this is the right direction. Yeah, this looks better. No. Yeah, this is a different one, yeah? No, this no, is no. better. This is not going to the LED. Yeah, no, but see, this has definitely a better, no. different direction. It's going yeah. to the Let's same. take a picture. Some PVC. Yeah, okay. Let's take a cine. This is definitely a different direction. Okay, some die. Probably not. See? Yeah. Same. Um, is it this one? But keep Could this yeah. be the LED, the other septal? So what we are thinking is septal. The where we are, we are in the septal? No. Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> look that way. No, no, I think this is, we just have to make a few other directions, yeah. So I pulled back all the way. That goes to the new channel. Yeah. Samin, uh, one of our uh, frequent uh, viewers and a person who's uh, deeply involved in education in Puerto Rico, Dr. Carlos uh, Nieves, has asked a question after the results of Acost. Uh, do you think a trial in NSTEMI with the newer antiplatelet agents uh, versus GP2B3A would be helpful? Well, I would say that um, those, uh, that, that's another good point. Uh, the question is that even if your GP2B3A uh, will win, we know will cause more bleeding. Some die. And, and, um, and the key remains is that once your newer antiplatelet therapy working so well, and we were one of, one of the biggest 2B3 user of time, and we found it that uh, you kind of these agents are obsolete. More, you're talking about the intravenous, um, uh, causing uh, thrombocytopenia, and definitely more bleeding. And same actually for the integralin, uh, when I looked into the uh, trial giving emergency room versus mm, early ACS right. trial, uh, giving ER versus in the cath lab, they had the same data so, or similar data, uh, basically that uh, giving it in the cath lab is better. So I would say that truly, while none of the 2B3A except maybe uh, early stage of the epi stent, uh, that um, uh, epsiximab showed mortality benefit uh, uh, in uh, that era of that stenting, but uh, these agents actually have shown really significant uh, benefit in terms of decrease in stent thrombosis uh, and uh, overall MACE rate. So I think that to me, I don't think there is any untapped uh, area remains uh, and the 2B3A probably, I actually predict that these are the agent probably will become extinct very shortly. Yeah, well, the, no. I think the real yeah. promising uh, advance coming is Kangrelor, though. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying with these agents and Kangrelor, I think these agents will, the 2B3A uh, has become, uh, you know, uh, primitive or uh, stone age. Samin, I, I think you can easily make your 9 o'clock meeting. <laughs> Good. So, so, tell us what, what exactly no, was. No, went back and I think uh, reoriented the wire right from uh, where the DAG, not our DAG originates, if you can go, go back to the original Did you give here. a different shape? 
No. 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 Same yeah. shape, but yeah. oriented are different. If you see here, I think our miracle was taking us, uh, what I would say, like a southward direction. Essentially, had to face up, right at um, where uh, you can put a pointer there. Move down. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, we, no, we you see, can't it. see it. Yeah, but that's okay. I understood that, uh, that just after the septal, you change the direction. So, Samin, if you go back, uh, this question probably is for Anu. If you go on the wire techniques here, what was this? This was just a control drilling? Yeah. yeah. But same, control drilling in the sense that you are not too aggressive, not back forth, back forth, back forth like this. Okay. You see my hand movements have to be fine so that suppose you are sub, sub intimal, you are not caused a lot of dissection or uh, what we call uh, is uh, uh, the smoky situation where you are outside the vessel um, and you, even if you are outside, you still with the wire and as that you not created some perforation situation. Yeah. Now that I'm just going to advance this, sometimes deep breath will help. Guide is not helping now. You want to go to low mag? Okay. Always try to have the whole picture view. And now when I'm doing the same thing, you're holding the wire with your right hand and with your left hand, you the two fingers, you're holding the guide with the uh, two E and here we just keep going inside, keep advancing further, guide is coming out. At this time, deep breath can help if the patient is awake. And rotate, actually I have seen even uh, five cross, just like Corsair, you can rotate. Sir, can you take a deep breath? Take a nice deep breath. Another deep breath. Same, you got to be, you can't be too aggressive in that situation. The guide will come out and everything will fly out. So just try as much as you can. If not, we change our uh, strategy here. Get us a two five balloon. Yeah, a 15. Other thing you can do is pull back and then again go back in once more. Always go with the speed. Breathe normally now. Breathe normally. Deep breath again. Anu, I was thinking that you would probably use a smaller balloon to start with. No, no, yeah, no. no. That is no, just to um, anchor. Uh, anchor. Anchor. Okay. Anchor. Okay. anchor, yeah. That, uh, you know, these, uh, you, these, you cannot do a dark extension because the tip of the wire will go and cause perforate. So, the, you just basically anchor in the guide so you can take out your... Um, Fine cross and use a small balloon. We have 1.25. That is a 125. Yeah. So, I mean, the other uh, you you did. Uh, uh, so, now what you do is get your fine cross all the way out. Then, uh, to anchor it, take a 25 balloon, any regular balloon. Side by side. Go and, side by side. And can go through six French. Yeah. Always uh, the people talk about that. Can you use two balloons with a six French guide at present? Yes. With this, uh, we use a Mark One, uh, and uh, with a lumen of 0 0.07172, you can easily use two balloons. You can use one stent and one balloon, but you cannot use two stents. But definitely, you can use two balloons. You did. Uh, so now, uh, yeah, if you ahead. see it, no, no, no. You can go low, Mac. Okay. So your balloon is at the tip of the guide, going up, eight to ten atmosphere. So this is anchoring the wire, and we make sure the fine cross is And this time, behind. of course, there will be no blood pressure transmitted, and now you can take your fine cross out. That is the fine cross. See it? No. But make sure your fine cross has come back a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, it it is. is out. It is out, yeah. You're up? Yeah. Good. Good. Your balloon is ready? Yeah. yeah. Good. And now you can see, the, because wire is uh, um, nicely trapped, As soon as you are there, then you deflate. 
and this is not on the wire it is just in the guide this balloon so you just take it out only thing is you got to suck it because uh, there will be air trapped see here you can see the air trapped bubbles this is a must And we have uh, our uh, run through ready. You wanted OCT? Side side, good. OCT for what? Huh? OCT is open. OCT? Mm. No, not yet. Samin, do you think the results of uh, a coast can also be used uh, for STEMI? Um, well, probably not. I mean, the whole question comes is uh, there. Uh, remember the difference here was 2 plus uh, and so uh, and uh, about 6-8% of patients went for um, medical, uh, sorry, for cabbage and uh, PCI was done in only 68% of cases. You want to show guideline that the balloon will yeah, go with the, the guide? Just show it that. Yeah, get the guideline or two. Yeah, then okay, therefore, now go regular mic. Yeah, in that uh, particular case, I would say knowing that the everybody gets the PCI is a different story uh, in acute MI setting. So I, I would say this will be more for a ACS and um, uh, uh, because here uh, that your chances of your PCI be done was two three hours, uh, while compared to in uh, in acute ischemic cases you are doing PCI yeah. immediately within thirty minutes. So Good. this is this is more global comprehensive yeah. management. You have yeah. all the options open. So, yeah. so I have the one two balloon. Yeah. And does not go. See that. See this? So I'm going forward. This exactly where the fine cross had trouble. So, time so the two bring. ways the two ways you can do it. One, you can dilate here and then keep you know progressively going forward. Okay, One, okay. the other way we want bring to show is by using child. mother and child. See okay. the guideliner. See why I can show you yeah. that by doing that it will go further. But for that, you everything has to come out. Means uh, that's a drawback. Your balloon has to come out. Uh, wire still remains. And uh, and the key is that we, we always try not to uh, dilate unless you know that you are in the true lumen. So, uh, the, the you know, some people will dilate then can create some more extensive dissection. Maybe a part is epicardial, but I'm we sure try to do a Fogarty. Huh? V3. Yeah. yeah. This is a V3, uh, uh, the, you know, version of uh, the, um, our guideliner by vascular solution, which is a very nice uh, 25 you centimeter. Yeah, what has happened, they used to have at the entrance uh, the metal which uh, used to be a, a problem because the stent used to get uh, stripped. So now they have changed it, it's just of a extension, a plastic extension all the way. And that to me is a major yeah. advantage, uh, improvement they did. Uh, Give the balloon. Yeah, because the uh, I can tell you that metal was a bad one. They used to have uh, the plastic in V1. Then V2 they made metal, then V3 they went back to plastic because a lot of money has been lost uh, because of uh, uh, this change in their um, uh, design. Say so, uh, other important thing is try not to advance the guideliner alone. You need a balloon ahead of you. Good. And now with this the newer uh, generation of the V3, really very helpful uh, and um, and the, as I said, this plastic, we actually are not having any stent stripping now, right? Used to have quite commonly and now it's no longer. Actually, yesterday I put even the 4038 um, a Promus element through a guideliner and was no problem. So now you have the yeah, balloon there. Already there, yeah. Okay. So now what you do is over that advance the guideliner. This is exactly what the paper was all about. Yeah. So now... What I'll do is, now see that the balloon, we were able to get the balloon across. See? Yes. Put all the way to the apex and pull back and see. And also, what guideliner does, it decrease your contrast use. Because now whatever injection will do, it will not go from the guide. But you, you just have to be careful also. If you have a damped pressure, don't inject. Pull back the guideliner a little bit. Now here we have a damped pressure. I would like to pull back. Yeah. And that concept remains everywhere. If you're damped, don't inject. I mean, some 
uh, dampening will remain, but if you clearly have uh, dampening, you want to take a picture? Take a cine. Okay. Yeah. So okay. therefore. And also not yeah. to inject too hard. Yeah. Slow injection. And soft and slow. Good. I think okay. we need to get this and dial it there. <laughs> and then after that, you can take a 2 0. We have the 2 5, no? If once two. we do this, 2 5 yeah. will go. Okay, go up here. Okay. Let's magnify. You won't see this balloon anyway. <laughs> 12 atmosphere. Yeah. I want to bring this back, okay? Yeah. Get too much damage. Now, since the purpose has been solved, now you bring back the guide liner because guide liner will cause some ischemia and, and ventricularization of the tracing. Go, go a little further. Yeah, done. Go further. Mm, go. Yeah, yeah. Good. I would still say that you probably need a long balloon. 2030. Down. 25 we have. 25 with the 15 high pressure? Yeah. Okay. Go, go here. Okay. Now wait one second. You have a run through open? Yeah. yeah. I can use side by side. And then also very important, uh, the point was just made that as soon as you had done the recanalization. Yeah. Go. Go again? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there. I think, uh, okay. Uh, that you need. change. Uh, to a regular work course regular wire. wire. Side by side or over the wire, usually side by side will be good enough. Up here. So what we can do now, you have the 2-5 balloon, you want to dilate first with the 2-5 balloon, then we change. Okay. You want to see? Yeah, take this out. Now this is a one point, it was a one point, two five, five sprinter. A sprinter. Legend. It works out quite well in these um, small. I know we don't have one millimeter balloon yet in US. Uh, outside US, in Japan, India, other places, we have one millimeter balloon. You want to take a picture now? Mm. Careful, careful. Don't pull. Okay, go. Sine. Good. I think oh, uh, that's why the little more anti grade flow. Long. long balloon? That's I would say. Forget. Yeah, the other 30 mm? Here. Yeah. No, go there. 30 uh, 2.030? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the. What uh, did you want? Yeah. The 30 millimeter and see quantum apex. Yeah. Also, to our uh, viewers, uh, two five, please what watch our companion uh, peripheral interventions two. cases uh, next five. week. Uh, and and hopefully, you've been finding uh, some useful tips and tricks with the uh, peripheral interventions. All these cases, of course, are all going to be archived on our uh, website. Uh, uh, please avail of that. Down. That went in quite easily. Yep. yep. And uh, I actually, you know, in these cases, use a long balloon. And now we are covering. Huh? Yeah. Just want to make sure we're not covering the dark. Yeah. Uh, but I, are we, uh, I think we need to bring back. A little more a proximal, distance. no? Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it there. Very little dye, just to make sure. Two millimeter. Yeah. No. Hmm. Good. And then just do the forward. And then you can remove the guide liner after if everything looks good. Good. And then because of radio opacity of the yeah, to, uh, wire, get the you're not length. able to see much. But at least you will have a flow. Good. Things looking excellent. Get me a run through. Yeah. Okay. Now another diagonal has appeared. Yes. And the first diagonal is unchanged. Remain good. So our idea is we have enough landing zone uh, so that we don't have to let the guide liner out. We don't need it now. So I mean before uh, sizing the stent a little nitro here or you yeah. feel... Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, absolutely. What did you want? The nitroglycerin, we take a picture. But I, I would say it's the same. The once three, you get to a three trio, oh. yeah. Uh, 3 or whether it's a 3 or 3.5, it's the same stand. You just have to change the. 
Any that, particular scent, scent you would prefer here in this case? Well, in this case, what our goal always have been that what one scent you use, try to use the same unless there is a restenosis or thrombus. So right. we use a Zion's Expedition uh, in the right corner, so goal will be to use the same uh, in the, uh, the LED also. Same drug. Same drug. Okay. Same polymer, same drug. I think all this process is very complex. No, go side by side, right? Mm -hmm. We are, do, we are going to just put a stand now, after you go side by side. Now the video of this case uh, will be posted by next week, uh, so viewers can have a chance to watch it then. Yeah, actually the, some people do ask us, uh, that within 24, 48 hours that is the case available. So just to, uh, we wanted to just make this point, takes about a week for the technology to transfer and uh, archive. So within one week, uh, the cases are available both at the CCC Live um, and cases, al also as they, well as the cardio source. Right, uh, you know, they are reviewed uh, thoroughly for uh, CME content and uh, I think that further uh, Elevates the viewer experience. Yes. Somehow I feel you're pulling too much. Okay. Go. Okay. Now we give a nitro. Okay. Let's take a picture. Looks excellent. Yeah. And looks a 3 to me. I don't know yeah. how you. One long 38. 3 Yep, 3 38. A lot of okay. spasm, you yeah. think, distally? Yeah. Just leave a lot it. of spasm. That's a myocardial bridge, a lot of spasm, which is okay. And the key will be that this advantage of this newer generation stand. See, few septals and those is diffusely diseased diagonals. I guarantee you they will all be, uh, will be there after we are done uh, with the stenting. Because in the past, with those first generation, those will go away. And uh, this actually has been one of the issue with the absorbed stent. While it has been uh, very beneficial, cause less angina, but side branch closure because of the thick strut. Uh, is higher and with this thin, thinner struts, you can really have uh, protection of these side branches. Probably too distal and uh, not the perfect location, but uh, you almost have a feeling there is a little bridging there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, distally, absolutely. Yeah. These are the things you have to leave it alone. Yes, some die. Uh, okay, pull back, right? Yeah. Good. Mm. Just after the diagonal? Yeah, just at that level. Good. Maybe half a cell in the dark. <laughs> okay. Three O. Nice, nice yeah. expansion. Well, Lack yeah. of calcification helps. Yeah. Down. Go up again. Yeah. The proximal area we may need to dilate a little more. Huh? Oh, see, unless they open and they keep. Yeah. But we are not doing it. Catheter. Now, question comes: says we have the 2.5 balloon. We might need now to rehabilitate a little bit of the distal vessel. Okay. No, you have the 2.0, 2 30 below. Then we can get a 2.5, 30. Okay. One way to do rehabilitate is just yeah. do this. Yeah. They open up all yeah. the spasm. Yeah. And get a little verapamil. You want to take a picture now? Just to show some dye, the question sometimes even wire can give trouble. Yeah. I think we can take out the wire and yeah. just to give vasodilators. Yeah. So now what we say is a rehabilitation for the vessel. Since we think it's bridge, use Verapamil. Very elegant recent paper with the use of adenosine for uh, more of the STEMI situation. Yeah, I mean that's um, uh, particularly with the Nipride, you the biggest believer of the Nipride, uh, those who uh, believed that it was a kind of a little blow to the whole concept. Um, but I think that adenosine somehow has been uh, in that field with Amistad 1, Amistad 2 trials and so. Uh, but truly uh, the practical utility, I don't think I'll change uh, our approach. Uh, with uh, that paper, I think we still will continue to use nipride in that situation. I don't know what, do you use uh, uh, IV adenosine? Uh, rarely, uh, rarely. Yeah, exactly. I, I have still been using uh, mainly nitroprusside. Yeah. Nitroprusside, yeah. 
It's a drug I feel more familiar with. Hypotension is easy to tackle. Yeah. And looking very good there. Good. Looks excellent. Nice. Yeah, there will be a lot of minor disease and so I tell everybody don't get crazy uh, because otherwise you will stand the whole vessel. Let it be and many of these cases actually I bring them electively to have an angiogram after 3-4 uh, months uh, if there is a diffuse distal disease. At that time you decide if any additional stand. What is the D2, the one that opened up uh, is now what we say is uh, hanging by a thread, not yeah. rope. So we can see some dye staining there. Yes. Yeah. But you are planning to leave it alone, I am sure. Yeah, yeah Look at this. exactly. A very Not nice good. reconstitution of the artery. Samin, uh, dual yeah. antiplatelet uh, regimen yeah. from here? Uh, uh, yes. Aspirin Plavix, he has been. Yeah, he has been on. So we'll continue the same. Uh, in a high risk situation, we used to change uh, and so, but no longer. Now, if we can c come back to, so I can complete uh, our today's uh, discussion. And that is the take home message. Uh, technical update in CTO recanalization and timing of P, uh, P2 Y12 receptor blockers. The technical advance in CTO recanalization have contributed to progressive increase in successful CTO uh, rates. Uh, also, guide extenders are new addition to the interventional armamentarium. And the second is the newer P2 Y12 receptor blockers, which I say the true for both. Presagrol and ticagrelor should be used at the time of PCI and preloading is not indicated and may even be harmful in a non STEMI setting. The short acting IV cangrelor has shown benefit in multiple trials and may be indicated prior to angiography over clopidogrel once it is available uh, the, the, here. I think it will still take a little while but could be available. Coming back to the three questions one is following are the technique of anti grade recanalization of CTO uh, lesions except. Parallel wire technique, the IVAS guided, a STAR technique, mother and child guide catheter and the CART. So we have spoken about uh, all of them. Second, maximum plated inhibition after pressagul load occurs uh, at 1 to 2 hour, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8 or more than 8 hours. And the third question is a cost trial comparing preloading versus load of pressagul at the time of PCI showed the following. Preload was associated with lower major bleeding. Preload was associated with lower mace. Preload was associated with lower stent thrombosis. Preload was associated with higher major bleeding. And lastly, preload was associated with lower post PCI MI. So those questions we put, you get the uh, credit. And uh, we'll just uh, make a last statement. And uh, it was a great case, uh, practical tips and try not to create extensive dissection was the key. I know. Was it uh, the mother and child approach which did everything here? Your yeah, question was uh, whether the guideline or mother-child helped in this case. Um, yes, we showed we demo showed the demonstration that the 1.2 balloon uh, reached uh, the CTO area, and we were not able to advance it further. And of course, the uh, guideliner helped us to get uh, it further and cross the lesion. If it was not, if the guideliner was not there, how we, would we have approached it? Take the 1.2 balloon as far as it goes, you dilate it, create a channel, then a millimeter by millimeter every time you keep going forward and you'll be able to uh, cross the uh, CTO. Only one, uh, the other point is a uh, wire escalation is the same thing. How do you cut short the wire escalation? You saw that it's no more than uh, one or two m minutes where you escalate your wire. Um, with a regular workhorse wire, go to the CTO area and uh, just try with the soft wire gently. Uh, the soft wire is whatever either the fielder and uh, always uh, there is this concept of using fielder XT if there is micro channel. Again, the micro channel concept is uh, to the chronic micro channels. You, uh, even if the fielder XT, it may go to some extent. Later on, you may need a little stiffer wire. That's the time if you think you need, you progress to. Uh, pilot uh, uh, family. Otherwise, like I showed you here, you have a, a nice, um, uh, 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 what do I say, entry point uh, with a conical uh, uh, CTO starting uh, like a cone in that situation. Uh, you can either start with Miracle or some if people like, they're used to pilot wires, start with the pilot wire, but something which is not tapered tape just for drilling. Again, same one to two minutes, you know that uh, this is not progressing anywhere. 
go to your uh, uh, next wire, uh, which could be either confidence or if you are used uh, to, you know, the progress family, you can uh, use the progress family. But essentially, you are not using more than two or three wires, so the end wire escalation is faster uh, just in a couple of minutes. Yep. Samin, uh, final uh, points from you? Yeah. No, I think this is just, uh, hopefully we have shown now a few of uh, various uh, the CTO techniques, integrate, retrograde, so they will branch out to uh, some other uh, devices and technique next month. <laughs> uh, give a little break to the CTO field. Uh, and uh, we really uh, thank uh, all our uh, viewers and uh, most importantly, our collaboration with uh, American College of Cardiology with CardioSource has been a tremendous educational experience and our mission of globally advancing uh, education has really become uh, uh, come to uh, uh, come to the light. Excellent, Samin. Uh, congratulations for another excellent case. Uh, the case will be archived soon. Uh, please keep uh, sending your uh, feedback. Uh, the next case will be October 15th and we will see you then.